Hey, welcome to Haphazard Homestead. I'm glad you're here. In this video, I'm gonna go over five tips for foraging wild edible weeds in your own neighborhood. I'm lucky enough to have a lot of weeds here at Haphazard Homestead, but sometimes it's good to go out into the neighborhood too. I'm gonna start off by showing some video from a trip I took just yesterday to go get a bunch of weeds and bring them home to eat. Then I'll come back and go over the five tips. The reason I'm showing this earlier video is to make sure that you have something you can relate to when I talk about these five tips. I'm out here, not at home, and I'm gonna get some weeds from a place in my neighborhood where I know that the weeds are good quality and it's okay to pick. I wanna start out by showing you what I take along when I go out away from home to forage. It's not complicated, but what I like to have in my pack is a few different plastic bags. So I have a different bag for the different kinds of plants that I'm gonna pick. I carry a couple of jars. That's so if I pick anything that's really delicate, like some of the flowers, if I were to pick a forsythia flowers, for example, I would put them in a jar because they would want to be protected. It would be too easy for them to get crushed. I also have a couple of paper bags. That's in case I find any mushrooms. Mushrooms don't do well in plastic. And then lastly, I have a little knife. That will make picking or cutting some of the plants a little easier and a little cleaner. So I'm gonna put all this back in my bag and let's get going because it's starting to rain and I don't want to get soaked. First things first, look, we've got some feral chives. That's easy. Look at that, that's nice. I'm gonna get these too. All right. That's all good. And look, I've got some Bellis perennis, some English daisies or lawn daisies. These are really easy to pick the flowers, but these leaves look like they're in good shape too. I'm just gonna come in and pick some of these leaves. It's not hard. I can just pick a bunch at once as long as I make sure that they're clean when I get done. Is just make sure when I'm done that I don't have anything that I don't want. This is the wild field mustard here. You can see that it's old enough to be flowering, but some of these leaves are in pretty good shape. I don't want the whole plant, but these green leaves here are gonna be just fine. And then look at this one. I'm gonna take the whole top off of this. That's a nice bud right there. Right there, that's really nice. And then I can get some of these flowers. Oh, and we can see here some narrow leaf plantain. It's getting a little fuzzy. It's all in pretty good shape because it's been so rainy and cloudy here, but you can see that it's out in the open. I'm gonna take just the youngest stuff that will be the tastiest. This narrow leaf plantain. It's got a nice mushroomy flavor to it. It's really a great flavor. And then we've got some dock here. This dock's in good shape. This one's in good shape. This one's in great shape. And that one's in good shape too, right there. That'll be nice and lemony. And here's a nice find. See this? This is miner's lettuce. This is great, a Claytonia. It has a really unique pattern to its, its leaves and the flower coming right out of the middle of the leaf. It's, it's unmistakable. And it's just great. It's one of those really great wild greens to find. I'm just gonna pick a bunch of this. It's in here with the grass, but it's not up against a tree where a dog might've gotten it. There's some chickweed mixed in here but I don't want to get it all at once. I want to get all of the same thing. I want to pick clean and pick organized. Keep the grass out, keep the other kind of plants out. So you can pick a handful like that, but then you want to come in and make sure that that's all you've got. It can be more efficient to pick by the handful, but then you've got to sort it out. Don't worry about the stems. You can always just take the stems off like that. Almost pure stand of chickweed, so it's going to be so much easier to pick. We can just pick it up like that and pull it out. And you can see that I still have to go through it to make sure that there's nothing in here that I don't want. I want to pick clean, like always. And then the lower part of the plant, you can see how it's all weak and kind of just scuzzy. So all we have to do is just cut it right in here. And we've got this. And we've got that nice section right there. Here's some cat's ear. I'm just gonna take the younger leaves. I think I've decided that I'm not gonna make a salad. I'm gonna cook some of these. It's got a very distinctive look and it's kind of furry. I always start out taking the little ones and then I end up taking bigger ones. Doesn't seem to matter because I'm gonna cook these. So I'm just looking for ones that are in good shape. And then here's some nipple wort. You can see this is uh, not a pure stand. There's some grass in here. So I'm gonna have to be a little careful as I pick it. A good way is if you 
think there's a lot of grass in it, it's not pure, go down to the base of the plant and just do like we do for the dandelions. Go down to the base, get the plant and pull it up like that. Nipplewort is an invasive weed. There is no problem in picking a bunch of it. Just pull the whole thing, just pull the whole thing, shake it, take the top off. And I can look at this and it see that it hasn't even started flowering yet. There's not even any flower buds on here yet. So it's gonna be in pretty good shape. I can just pull it up and get a bunch of this. I'll just fold it in half. And again, it's even, I do need to make, pay attention and make sure I'm picking clean. I don't want any contaminants in there. It's stick tights. You can see how it's stick tights. Look at that, cleavers. Look at this, this is a nice south thistle. It's not a prickly south thistle, I think it's a common south thistle. And it looks to me like it's been mowed a couple of times and has sprouted back out. So I'm gonna go away in here with the knife and cut it and then shake it out. We can take a look at it all. See, look at that, that's several different plants. So I'm gonna take them apart like this and each one I'm gonna cut it. I'm gonna cut it so we got a nice south thistle. Can you see how that is? I'm just gonna cut that. It makes it a lot easier when you just cut the whole plant up off at the roots. All right, there we go. But look, there's some dandelions. When it's in the tall grass like this, what's the easy thing to do? Go down and find the base and then cut it out of the ground. Go cut the whole base out of the ground and then bring it up to shake it off, right? So we can get all the other stuff, get the, get the grass out, get all the other stuff, just shake it get the grass out. So what we're gonna do is just cut the very base of this off. We'll just take it home just like that, all right? That's a nice way to clean it up. Here we've got some sheep sorrel with its little arrow leaves right there. I'm gonna get the little stalks. There's a stalk right there. There's a little stalk. As you can see how it grows, it's just all with runners. It's kind of a mess to pick. No way around it. You can tell it was wet out there. Look at that. That's our haul. There we go. Now, I was going to make a salad. But I'm not now because it, everything was a little more mature than I would have liked for a salad. So let's go start off with what we've got. This dock. Look how fresh and green that is. That's going to be in good shape for cooking. Here's some cat's ear. It has a real distinctive look to it. And then it's also fuzzy. I'll do a video on that sometime. There's a lot to this cat's ear. We've got our dandelion greens. Not too many out there. We've got some great miner's lettuce. I'm gonna go through it and take out some that's in the worst shape, like some of that that's maybe a little on the old side. We've got our stick tights or cleavers. We've got quite a bit of it. It has not started going to seed yet. What do we have here? A bunch of wild field mustard. I've got videos on that. You can see the wild field mustard. A lot of it was the, these stalks, some of the flowers. Here we've got a little sheep sorrel. And you can tell it's related to rhubarb and buckwheat. Just look at that flower stalk right there. You've got some of the English daisy, the Bellus perennis. These are the leaves. We've got some of the flowers and they've closed now after they got picked. So that's all right. We'll just throw them right in the mix. We'll cook them all down. I got some wild chives here. They're looking pretty good. We've got the narrow leaf plantain. I went ahead and picked some bigger stuff. It's still pretty tender but it's too tough really for me to enjoy eating in a salad. That was part of the reason for deciding to cook all this. Oh, I didn't show picking this one, but this is one of the sow thistles. This is the prickly sow thistle. I'm gonna parboil that, blanch it, just like I do with the dandelions. And then these are the common sow thistle. We have some nipplewort. You see it has that distinctive leaf, kind of a thin leaf, and it's got these little lobes part way down. A bunch of chickweed. That's really going to be the base for a lot. That'll, that will cook down a lot. We need to go through this and pick out if there's any pieces of grass. Make sure that it's only what we want. Make sure there's no snails or bugs or anything like that. Any low quality kind of stuff in here we want to pick out. 
you can see something like on this prickly sow thistle, I'm going to go ahead and cut the base off and just have the leaves. Go ahead and cut off anything that you don't want. What I'm going to do is sort these into two piles. I have one pile for uh, the blanching and one pile for just putting straight into the pot. So I'm going to reorganize this. Here I put things into the order of what I'm going to do with them. On this side, I'm not going to blanch anything. This can all just be cooked straight up directly. The dock is going to be fine just to be cooked straight up. The chickweed will be fine. The field mustard, it does not have to be blanched. It's going to taste good. The miner's lettuce, the sorrel, and the English daisies can go right in. And the chives don't have to be blanched either. Here's the side I'm going to blanch. I'm going to blanch the dandelions. I'm going to blanch the nipplewort, the sow thistle, and the prickly sow thistle, the narrow leaf plantain, the cleavers, and the cat's ears. Some because they'll be a little tough, like the plantain. Others because they'll be a little more bitter, like the uh, dandelion. And then the prickly sow thistle, just because it will cook down better. It'll hold up its substance, but it will get softer if I blanch it. I do need to clean up some of this dandelion though. I'm just going to cut all that off right there. That'll be good. I'm going to wash all of this off. This is why you want to wash well, because there's a lot of dirt. We want to have a second pot of boiling water ready to go, and then we'll just put all of the greens in that. Second pot of boiling water, dump all that in. There you go. You can see how it cooked down. There wasn't that much left, was there? Are there greens in with that? To just boil in that second pot of water till everything's done. We'll chop it all up when we're done. Stir that all in. Then we'll just let all that cook. You can see some of it's already been cooked. It's the darker green and other stuff has been is just new in there. When I drain it again, I save that water the second time around because what's in there is going to be good. That's a pot liquor. That is worth saving. I'm going to use that for soup. That's delicious stuff. I didn't cut anything up, but I just want to show you something. Look how that cooked down. So all I'm doing is just chopping this up a little bit. If you think you got anything that's in there a little too tough, you can just chop it up. It doesn't really need it that much. That's good. Mm. Stop eating it. I got some smoked bacon. I'm going to put my onions in there. I'm going to let those cook pretty slow. We put all our greens in, stir them in. And if you want to add more liquid, just use that pot liquor from the second boiling of the greens. It's amazing how all those greens cook down so much. Just pour some pot liquor in there. Let that slowly cook. You can see the second time around that they just don't, don't cook down. It's already been cooked down from the pot when it got boiled. Now it just has softened it up and taken up all the flavor of the onions and the bacon. Look at that. That's going to be good. Just going to serve that right up. I'm going to load up my plate. There's my bowl of greens. Oh yeah. With a nice winter ale because it's cold and wet out there today. So that's what I'm going to have. That's looking good. I'll check with you later. Yeah, I'm glad I didn't have a salad because this was delicious. Tip number one is to learn a wide variety of edible weeds. There are so many good weeds to eat. The more weeds that you know, the easier it is to get enough for a whole meal for yourself or for a whole group of people. Sometimes it is nice just to focus on one kind of plant, but if you're going out into the neighborhood and you aren't sure what you're going to find, the more weeds you know, the easier it will be to find enough to make it worth your while. Tip number two is to make a neighborhood foraging kit. It doesn't have to be complicated because you're just going out into the neighborhood. You don't have to have a map and a compass and all kinds of emergency equipment like if you were going to go far away. You're just in your neighborhood. The kit can be simple, and in the springtime, the kit is really simple. It's just a bunch of plastic bags for the greens that you're going to find. It has a jar for some of the delicate flowers that you might find. There's some paper sacks if you think that you might find any mushrooms. And then there's a little knife 
so that you can cut right at root level to get some of the greens that just are a lot easier to harvest that way, like the dandelions that we saw from my trip. Why do I have so many plastic bags? I think you know by now if you've seen any of my other videos, it's so that we can pick organized and we can pick clean. It is okay to put two or three different kinds of plants in a single plastic bag, but it sure does help to keep that picking organized and put them in the plastic bag in a way that's easy to take apart back in the kitchen. The goal is to make sure that we don't get any plants in there that we don't want to eat. And it's a lot easier to organize that back in the kitchen when you've picked organized and kept the plants separate in their own plastic bag. Tip number three is to high grade. What does that mean? That means it's okay to just pick the easy things. Just pick the prime plants. In the garden, if you're picking berries or other plants, you don't want to high grade. You want to make sure you get all of the harvest that you can. But when you're out foraging in the neighborhood for weeds, it's okay just to take the best quality plants. My neighborhood foraging trip that I just showed, you probably noticed that there were kinds of plants that I didn't even pick any of. And you probably noticed that of the kinds of plants that I did pick, I left a lot behind. That's because it was easier and more fun and more interesting to pick the variety of plants and only focus on getting the best plants and the ones that are the easiest to pick. They're in a high enough density, in a high enough concentration to make it worthwhile and not a chore. Tip number four is to be adaptable. Now, to be honest, when I was going out on this neighborhood foraging trip, I had in my mind that I was gonna pick greens for a salad. But the reality was, after I looked at what plants were there and what kind of stage they were in and what kind of quality they were, I decided I was gonna pick greens for a mixed pot of cooked greens instead. That opened up the kinds of plants that I was interested in picking. It opened up the quality of the plants, the age of the plants that I was interested in picking. When I got home, I could have separated out some kinds of plants, like the chickweed or the miner's lettuce, and kept that for salads or putting on sandwiches, but it was easiest just to put it all in a pot of mixed greens. So tip number four is to be adaptable and just go with what you're finding out there in the neighborhood. Tip number five has to do with cooking the greens back in the kitchen. Tip number five is keep it simple. Don't overthink cooking greens in the kitchen. The ratios, the proportion of this kind or that kind of green doesn't matter at all. It's all gonna turn out just fine and delicious. The key is just to separate out the greens into the kind that need to be parboiled and then the kinds that don't. That parboiling of some of the greens, like the cleavers, the dandelions, the other greens that may be a little tough or a little bitter, that just sweetens them up, it tenderizes them, and makes them just fine for putting in with all the other greens that don't need to be parboiled, that just need to be boiled once. Bacon and onions makes any cooked greens delicious. So keep it simple, don't overthink a mixed pot of greens. And don't forget, don't throw away that second pot of water. That is great for making soup. Well, I'm gonna sit here and have some leftover greens from yesterday. These are so delicious. I know your neighborhood is full of weeds. Everybody's neighborhood is full of weeds. Good weeds to eat. So I hope this inspires you to get to know the weeds in your neighborhood. They aren't all edible, that's for sure, but the ones that are can be really delicious and real food for regular people. It's fun, it's delicious, and it helps you get to appreciate what's going on in your neighborhood. So, I hope things are going well at your place. If you enjoyed this video or got anything helpful out of it, I'd appreciate a thumbs up. If this is your first time here and you found this interesting, there's more content like this on its way, so I hope you subscribe. And for those of you who like to watch gardening videos, don't worry, there's plenty of time for gardening. That's on its way too. So, thanks for watching. Bye. This is, this is so delicious.